Did Chris Bumstead's diet give him his fifth Olympia title? Well, he already won it, but I guess now we can see how that diet contributed. I believe we critiqued one just a few months ago, and some of his meals were pretty good from a food quality perspective. Others, not so much. But, you know, with all the performance-enhancing drug use and everything else going into it, it's hard to say. What's certain is that his training is definitely uh, either too intense or too reckless because he tore his bicep last year, and this year he tore his back, his uh, lat. So, um, I mean, regardless of what you're eating, if you're doing crazy stuff in the gym, you can get injured anyway, but that's on his trainer. Just under two weeks out and time for another full day of eating. It really hasn't changed much, but you guys still like these. So I figured I would do it. My weight is under 250 right now, so we're in a good spot. I have to make 242 weigh in, and the weigh-ins are in the morning now, so I'm very comfortable. I'm gonna make weight, feeling good. So I've actually had a few high carb days recently. Nothing crazy or whatever. Yeah, if you guys don't follow bodybuilding, uh, there's like a relatively new classic physique division that this guy has won like the five years it has existed. Uh, they do have a weight limit. Uh, which makes me curious why he even does like this heavy intense training you never hear about those golden era bodybuilders like getting injured doing crazy stuff in the gym you know it was just you know moderate intensity for long training sessions with very high volume right around 300 grams of carbs just to like not allow my body to drop too fast and kind of consume itself which is something i've never done in the past so it's allowed me to be a little fuller have better workouts right now and hopefully just have a more like full dense look on stage but regardless, I just finished 45 minutes of cardio. I'm still only doing 45 minutes of cardio in the morning, and then I do like a 20 or 30 minute light walk at night, mainly for digestion. And meal one, I eat right after, I don't even shower now because I'm so hungry. I'll wake up sometimes at 5 a.m. and my stomach is just like grumbling and I'm fucking hungry. So breakfast it is, still making the pancakes. I have some random tricks I do. In the last YouTube video I did, someone told me to put the plate in the microwave before putting the pancakes on it because then it's hot and the hot pancakes on it are the same temperature and it doesn't I'm not going to go into microwaves and radiation too much in this video but if you guys are curious a few years ago we did explain in depth you know how microwaves emit high levels of radiation and, and how all other household devices are also pretty dangerous uh, wifi shielding.com great condensation and make it like wet and it also keeps the pancakes actually warm so I put this in the microwave for like 30 seconds, and when it gets closer, I put it in for another 30 seconds, and then I put it on a hot plate. But, anyways, breakfast, pancakes, is down to one single whole egg, so fats are getting pretty low now. Today's not a high day, I don't think at least unless honey changes randomly. But I do one whole egg, and then I do 250 grams of egg whites, which is great because you get volume and little to no calories. Next, we got oats. 70, I don't remember where I was that last time, but my breakfast hasn't changed a lot. This is my like breaking my fast, obviously. That's the fucking name. But I do 70 grams of oats, and in here. I and when we start nitpicking this, it gets you curious. Oh well, how how is he the best? How does he win five times if he's not doing everything right? It's kind of an even playing field, you know. All the other competitors don't know this stuff either. You know, they don't know about radiation. They don't know about importance of organic food. They don't know about food quality, so the playing field's even in regards to the competition and what everyone's doing. I add this fiber Courtney has, sun fiber, and it's kind of helped my digestion, and I think it adds a little bit to the fluffiness of the pancakes. I also threw in a group of GI from Revive. This stuff actually works very well. I was actually pretty shocked that my stomach was not, not doing bad, but my digestion was really great. Yeah, he has been complaining about digestive issues in the past I, like, few videos. I went to the bathroom the next day way better, and my stomach has been feeling way better ever since. So super pumped for that. And then pumpkin, this is another secret of the pancakes. I'm running kind of low here, but I do like 50 grams of pumpkin, and this just allows them to stay like moist and not get too dry. Man, I'm to explain this fucking pancake. And it's like purely fiber. There's like no calories to this shit. So it's... Purely fiber, no calories to this. Sh 
that's the macronutrient mumbo jumbo that gives people liver failure because pumpkin is very high in beta carotene. Liver has to process it very hard in the liver. So, you know, there's more to food than the macronutrient content. Nice little additive. And the protein. The go protein for these maple waffle eggs. Protein is like probably one of my favorite flavors in print and it works so good for pancakes because it gives you like a little bit of uh, flavor like you have some maple in there. You might not get maple syrup. So I do a scoop and like a quarter of that. Finally, the secret to it tasting really fucking good is that you get a shit ton of cinnamon. I used to put it in the pancakes and now I literally just hit it like a lot. Yeah, cinnamon is really hard on the liver. You can look up a lot of studies showing uh, showing how bad the compounds in cinnamon are, especially when using such high amounts. I wouldn't be surprised if that meal just kind of shut down his liver completely, which is possibly why his digestion isn't doing so good. But you know, based on all those things he's adding to this, you know, if it was just whole eggs and oats with a little maple syrup on them, 100% guarantee he'd look better and feel better. 100% guarantee. Just keep it to simple whole foods instead. You know, he's using pasteurized egg whites. He's got protein powder in there. He has to add a fiber supplement. He's adding pumpkin puree, a ton of cinnamon. Nothing's organic. There's a lot of added chemicals. You know, going simpler, even if it wasn't organic, with just oats, whole eggs, and maple syrup. How can, who is the idiot along the way that? convince people that this is healthier and better for bodybuilding in any capacity. It's not possible. And I put a little salt in too. I'm down to the point now where honey wants to like tracking how much sodium I'm eating in a day. But literally have this fucking crack scale. I mean, to be fair, if you put a tablespoon of cinnamon on every meal and you shut down your liver, technically you won't be digesting food or calories. Your body, because your body can't absorb it with the impaired liver function. Off Amazon and I have to weigh my salt as if I'm like a drug dealer fucking pushing crystals on the street. <laughs> you cannot go that Alright, yeah, so that's it. And then I add three seconds worth of water. Electrolyte, sodium, kidney function, and water intake are uh, almost are very significant the in these guys yeah. and their final days. Right, no, no idea how many seconds I've been. Oh yeah. shit. But yeah, that's my <laughs> breakfast. So I'm gonna blend the shit out of this. The pans are already on because they need to be hot when you put the pancakes on. Otherwise they get like too dry. I want them like hot, flip them really quick, get them off really quick. And yeah, so I'm gonna cook these up, show you the final product and I'll give you guys a calorie count. All right, we're on low battery, so I'm gonna do this quick. This is the final product. It looks like absolute shit. <laughs> But to be fair, all the crispy bits that kind of get stuck in the pan, I just scrape them off at the end and put them in the top and they taste amazing. So oats are what I have every morning for breakfast, but I soak my pancake batter overnight and really let the oats absorb the water. By putting the oats dry in there, blending them up and then cooking them, another thing that's bad for digestion in this meal. And it's heavily cooked, you know. Anything, and it tastes really good. Everything's so I don't really, really care. processed, but really cooked. Total calories for breakfast is 653 calories. So still a pretty hefty breakfast for prep. My biggest meal of the day by far. It's about 65 grams of protein. So beautiful way to break your fast and a lot of volume. I actually got a lot of pancakes out of this. You can see a pretty hefty amount in there. It's a little bit thinner than I normally do because I put a little bit more water because I lost my three second Later count. But you know, maybe it'll pay off to my benefit and I'll feel like I'm eating more. But yeah, that's breakfast. So thank you guys for sharing food. I'm gonna eat. Watch some Jujutsu Kaisen and see you for meal two. Oh, he's a weave. Okay. All right, so meal numero dos. I typically take this with breakfast, but I didn't today. So I take one of these every day. There's some digestive enzymes and some stuff to help digest carbs and some simps activity and whatnot. It's kind of mild to only take one a day. I'm not eating a lot of carbs right now, so that's it. I also take zinc carnosine and this gut health from Revive as well. I've been obsessing over digestion this year and it's been helping because it helps me. So, so I mean, we have an enzyme blend on organ supplements, but I have not seen one other enzyme blend on the market that has uh, the actual enzymes that the body uses to digest food. Usually it's like bromelain and 
papain and these really corrosive enzymes that kind of just harm the liver and just dissolve the food like to mush. They don't actually help your body absorb the nutrients. Taking carnosine, which, you know, in the big picture, just general protein intake and B vitamins are much more important. And I, I don't know what's in that gut health supplement. It's probably just a small amount of probiotics, lactobacillus based, which, you know, I mean, you really want some water keeper grains or some actual probiotic foods in there, which will permanently fix your gut to the point that you don't have to take the stuff every day. So much getting through prep, not having like horrible gas. Helps Courtney sleep at night too. I'm not shitting my pants and gas train bringing the entire room. So I'm a lot better this year. My stomach. Yeah, I mean, he's being like pretty honest and truthful about having poor digestive issues, which is surprising because, again, this is this is the best guy Cl classic olympia five-time winner is complaining that his stomach's messed up like he's not clearly not healthy and and based on this and the injuries who knows if he's going to try to do it another year because th there were rumors about him retiring but you know th there's no reason like if he, if he knew what he was doing to turn it around and and keep things in check easily for at least a few more years. It feels a lot better. It's tough. Some of this flatter. Maybe I'll have a smaller waist. You never know. But the zinc carnitine also helps me with um, acid reflux. It helps your gut lining. And I get really bad acid reflux when I get really low calorie. So check them out. But on to meal number two. This is 180 out, grams know? of white rice, 220 grams of fresh Atlantic cod, and some asparagus. I up my protein from all my meals from 200 fish typically and 180 grams of chicken. Weight, not protein. Now I've upped them each 20 grams just because honey was like, you so know. So that meal is cod, asparagus, and rice. I mean, I'm not a fan of greens in general, but it's a small amount of asparagus, and you do need something in there for fiber with the white rice. So whether it's beans or cauliflower, asparagus, not much of a fan of. Uh, I have been having some rice myself a few times a week for lunch, alternating with quinoa. And cod is probably the healthiest, one of the healthiest fish protein sources. So this meal gets my stamp of approval. I mean, you know, did he use organic rice? Did he use mineral water to cook the rice? Definitely not. But we're in the right direction. While well, your weight's coming down, let's put in a little more calories and make it more protein. You can handle more protein because it's not that high. So this is like the highest my protein's ever been and honestly kind of nice. So hopefully it pays off in the end and it helps me stay full a little bit longer. But this is my pre-workout meal. Maybe if you keep listening to the trainer on diet and workout, you'll get to tear a third muscle next year. Put this down and give you guys the calories. It's 425 calories, about 43 grams of protein. So simple, like easy pre-workout. Gonna go hit some hamstrings after this and see you guys for meal number shake. What? I was gonna say meal number three, but that protein shake. Mm. Ten. surprised you know these guys don't know about the radiation stuff you know you would assume i mean this guy's having digestive issues so just wearing protective clothing especially throughout the day and going to the gym and stuff it'll definitely play a big factor in fixing digestion as we cook ourselves with microwave Welcome back to the world's most boring full day of eating ever. I had a, a shake after the workout when I was driving home quick, just two scoops of protein and another scoop of fiber. I Bro, boring is what those old school bodybuilders used to do. They had like tilapia and rice every meal. That was it. Not even rice, just tilapia, just fish, <laughs> nothing else. They were just eating plain plates full of fish. I used to always make a creamy at the beginning of prep and in previous preps I used to blend in my Nutribullet like as much ice and water and protein as I could and it would like fluff up and I drink and get super bloated and make me full and kind of curl my appetite a little bit but it was 
kind of fucking up my digestion being that like bloated and I didn't like the concept this year of my waist feeling like full. I'm really trying to like vacuum a lot, train my abs and to shrink my waist this year. It's been one of my huge goals. So I haven't been doing that. I just had I either make a paste where I put a little bit of water and I mix up the protein or today I just mix it with like eight ounces and drink it like a normal human being. So I had that and then we came home and I threw together a nice little chicken, rice and asparagus, probably the most staple prep meal that you could imagine it's 200 grams of chicken breast again kind of unrelated but when you're doing volume stuff for like appetite suppression whether drinking a lot of water or eating a lot of vegetable you got to keep in mind the toxins and the pollutants because uh you know if it's full of fluoride and chemicals and stuff it's just that's why you get bloated like you shouldn't get bloated having ice or water the reason you're getting bloated is you know what's in all that water you're using uh chicken again i'm not that much of a fan of chicken as a protein source we do have like really high quality corn and soy free chicken on frankie's range meat which i'm sure he's not using here it needs to be 180 up to 200 a random amount of asparagus i never do too much and then 150 grams of white rice the problem with chicken is the animals are you know jabbed and injected with a lot of stuff you know conventional even if they're getting organic feed it's still very unhealthy from a meat perspective Pork and chicken, very bad, unless you have a good source. And some pink Himalayan salt. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of honey mustard on this one. This is the goat honey mustard from Whole Foods. It's also the lowest calorie. It's only five calories, so I eat a little bit without it. A yeah, little bit that's on what I get so curious about. Like, how, how big of a deal is it? Like, how come these guys haven't tried going fully organic? No condiments, no nothing, none of this added stuff. How would they look and feel then? I'm only getting like 10, 15 calories of honey mustard. And yeah, that's about it. Meal number four. And then the beautiful thing about training at one o'clock is I train for like three hours, have a shake, eat this at like 4.30. And then for the rest of the day, I get to eat every like two hours, hour and a half, and then the day's over. So it's just an easy way for me to like manage my meals and not feel too hungry throughout the day. So I'm gonna eat this and enjoy. Like I guarantee you he's doing like incredibly heavy weight, long rest times. I, I don't understand why these bot like and see you guys for meal number four. to the very exciting meal number four, fish and rice. This time I uh, stir fried it up with a little bit of coconut aminos, the best seasoning ever. And then I put- Yes, but did you get your coconut aminos from frankiesrangefoods.com? Put a little bit of lemon on it. Lemon on fish and prep is beautiful. I always get seeds in here and they're being seeds too. And then I salt the shit of it and I also added some zucchini in there. The zucchini is probably like the easiest digestible lowest calorie vegetable getting lots of seeds in here but it also tastes great so dumping this in here and enjoying some fish and rice and i'm trying to get seeds out of here with my finger me and courtney were talking about like how crazy you go in prep and the little things that like are just so like redundant that make you want just like anything like i she we me and courtney love to snack she has a bag of chips she brings it she'll have like it it'll last her like a month or a day depending on the season burn and then you snack and i just looked at her and i was like what i would do right now just to have like three chips you know just like a little bit of a snack something a little bit extra and a little bit of fat in my diet anything she had a chicken sausage for breakfast and i was like that looks like the best thing i've ever seen in my life just like a little bit of grease soaking out of it and it looked absolutely amazing the only fat i have in a day right now is sometimes i get salmon so I'm lucky I get it tonight and then one whole egg in the morning. So I just like crave that. And yeah, I think, uh, I think that was tilapia. He didn't say what type of fish it was. Uh, you know, having rice a few times a week from an arsenic perspective is okay. But every single meal for like four or five meals a day, you know, you, you want to try to switch up the carb sources. I just want to snack because I'm sick of eating rice stir fries with a fork. I just want some of my hands like a sandwich. But yeah, that's life. You know, it is what it is. So, only yeah, if these guys had an understanding of nutrition, could probably increase the fat in the diet and have higher quality foods.
and still be able to have an effective contest prep, but. A couple more days of this, not even weeks left, so it's getting down to it. But I'm gonna enjoy this meal. This is a low calorie one. This one's only 386 calories, 45 grams of protein says this. I don't know how accurate this is, but you guys like to know macros, so I throw it in there. Typically don't go by this, I just know, but I eat every day, the same foods every day, and I reduce by such. So yeah, what's going on? See you for meal number five. It's even more boring than this, so get ready. Yeah, having like some beans instead of the the asparagus give him you know some more soluble fiber help with the liver function it's not that bad of a meal I got 200 grams of chicken breast and asparagus. So, very delicious. This is approximately 240 calories. I mean, I, I never understood why these guys are still following these like outdated eating routines where they're eating like six or seven times a day and they're still hungry. Like you can have three or four larger meals and from a digestion perspective, it's the exact same thing. You know, you're just spending a lot more time and a lot more prep. Uh, maybe, maybe from an appetite suppressing perspective, they like that more, but th there's no benefit over having six or seven meals versus three or four if the food volume is the same. If anything, it's better to give your digestion a break and then you can have probiotics and enzymes in each meal to, to make sure the food's being digested 100%. For a meal, so I just want to get a little bit sad, but I got my asparagus and freshly cooked chicken to enjoy a little bit more. I mean, it's, it's, it's low quality inflammatory chicken. I mean, he's giving himself protein to build muscle tissue. And, and asparagus, you know, again, I'm, I'm more of a fan of cauliflower, artichokes, other vegetables that don't have as much flavonoids and that are a little bit easier to digest and offer, you know, some fiber for the body to use to detox the liver as well as to feed the gut bacteria. I have fish in this meal, but fish on its own is just not as good. So I put fish in my rice now and I have chicken with vegetables. Yeah, I don't really know what the fuck else I can say about eating asparagus and chicken other than time to get shredded. So, gonna eat this, kill a little bit more time, eat another small meal, and we'll wrap it up for the final meal of the day. In a like, day. if that meal was just a, a ribeye steak, it'd be so much healthier. Even a very, very lean steak, even just a piece of fish. Because chicken is such a low quality protein, and you don't really need the asparagus. <laughs> All right, so here we are at 9.45 p.m. about to eat my last meal. And as I said, they get less and less exciting as the day goes on. But this one's actually really good because, I, like I said, I've been like craving fats. Your salmon just so good when you're starving. I love salmon. Salmon covered in salt with like fresh jasmine rice. Nothing on it. Absolutely one of my favorite meals. But this is the last meal of the day. It is just 200 grams of salmon. I have veggies and shit with it, but I have veggies all day, so I don't have my night. Let's just eat this and then I Probably farm-raised salmon. I think we've done videos talking about how toxic that is. But yeah, th this guy's clearly craving, craving fat. And I'd be curious to see if, if these guys actually followed high quality foods, remove the inflammation, increase the fat, didn't you know suppress their appetite too much i'm sure i'm sure they can do the contest prep just as effectively we go right to bed afterwards so we're gonna wrap it up here and the total calorie count again i don't know how accurate this shit ever is but you guys always want to know 2,689 calories, so still right around 2,700 calories, 200 grams of carbs, 199, 42 grams of fat, and 351 grams of protein. My protein's a little bit higher from the last time I did this, carbs are a little bit lower, and that's just kind of something we swapped up here at the end. And this is the first prep where I am ever eating over 2,500, probably over 2,000 calories at the end of prep. So for whatever reason, decent off season, just 
good sleep, good rest, less stress because it was such a brutal beginning of this prep that I like locked in everything at the end. My body just like came back to life. My thyroid's working, my metabolism's working. I don't really know, but I'm just counting my lucky stars because I'm grateful that I'm able to eat more than I've really ever eaten in the past. You guys see, it's almost like a rite of passage in my suffering at the end of some preps where I'm eating like 1500 calories doing two hours of cardio. Here I am doing like 45 minutes and eating 2700 calories. So super grateful for that, just enjoying that. But we are getting close and I still have to make a little bit of weight that I got to cut off. So we're going to start suffering probably a little bit more, but only for like five or six. Yeah, it makes, it makes you wonder what these guys put themselves through yet you know you're missing such key elements of health you know whether it's the radiation stuff or the food quality or that but hey i guess he won again uh hopefully hopefully he sticks it out and keeps going but you know based on these things he's hinting at in this video and and how he's saying he's feeling i wouldn't be surprised if he decides to take some time off or uh throw in the towel for next year because you know your digestion being that messed up and, and how he's suffering doing this and, and all the injuries with training you know, let, let, let's just say he's lucky that he has those genetics and that he's uh, he's got people giving him the right drugs because, again, the playing field's even. seems like everyone's doing conventional bro science bodybuilder stuff for the most part. Uh, but that'll be it. Really not a super inflammatory diet, just lacking quality all around. Protein sources could be better. Could go organic on some stuff, but it's it's not horrendous, horrendous, horrendous. Uh, if you guys do want high quality protein, you can go to frankiesfreeenergymeat.com where we have corn and soy free chicken at the most affordable price online. We got the pasture raised pork share now available so you guys can get affordable pork, raw milk fed, uh, corn and soy free pork. And of course we have grass fed beef and all that other stuff, guys. Lots of new restocks, everything available. frankiesfreeenergymeat.com. We just got the eggs back. We got raw dairy in. Lots and lots of stuff, guys. And you can see all the other businesses on frank-stefano.com if you want to learn more. Thanks for joining, guys. Drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe and check that notification bell. I'll see you guys soon.